Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Dr. Colin Zhu, and thank you so much for being here with us. This is the Thrive Bites podcast, and welcome to season five. Here we talk about three things, plant-powered living, enhancing emotional resilience, and creating a thriving mindset. And I interview the most passionate guests here, ranging from physicians to coaches to dietitians to entrepreneurs. And my hope is to give you really informative and high-valued conversations. So please follow us here on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, and wherever you hear your podcast. Come on in. And I can't wait to see you inside. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Thrive Buds Podcast. I am joined by Chef Babita Saretha, and she is an amazing, amazing human being. She is a plant-based uh, vegan chef calling all the way from Nepal. And we have half of our episode talking about her story, how she got into the plant-based world, how she found cooking you know, from an early age, and how that has uh, applied to her being the first cookbook author of plant-based Himalaya of Nepal. And it's very, very exciting. Uh, and she also cooks for, for us as well. She will be demonstrating a recipe from her cookbook. So you don't want to miss this and I'll see you inside. Okay, guys. Well, welcome to another episode of Thrive Bites Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Colin Zhu. And thank you so much for being here with us. You could have been anywhere in the world and you decided to spend your precious moments with us today. And I'm very, very, very grateful. So without further ado, I am super, super excited to introduce our next guest. Her name is Chef uh, Babita Shretha. Oh man, I hope I pronounced that correctly. She'll let me know. And uh, she is a plant-based chef, photographer, graphic designer, and author of Plant-Based Himalaya, which will be due, I believe, coming in September, or maybe it's already published. So we'll get, we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> and she has a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful story. She is actually calling from all the way from Nepal. And, you know, she has a lovely story cooking for a couple of decades, and she has a lot of skill sets and it was her mission, uh, unbeknownst to her, to actually create the first plant-based cookbook of Nepal. And I'm very, very excited to interview her about that, figure out her you know, background story and why she uh, decided to go on the vegan lifestyle. So without further ado, please welcome Chef Bugita. Hello. Namaste. <laughs> namaste, namaste. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining with us. Um, I believe it's your morning, right? Yes, it's eight o'clock <laughs> in the morning here. And tell us exactly where uh, where in Nepal you're calling from. I'm in Pokhara right now. It's the city of the mountains and lakes. Ooh! So, <laughs> yeah. if you were to travel to the Himalayas, how long does it take <laughs> there by foot, uh, by by horse, by car? <laughs> Uh, I would say like by if you want to take a cab or a taxi one day, so oh, one day wow. and then and then you have to hike on the uh -huh. top. Yeah. Oh. Wow, yeah. wow. I, so, I'm sure uh, uh, super, super exciting. <laughs> do, a, yeah. do you get a lot of tourists just wanting to go and hike the Himalayas? I'm sure, right? Yes, this is the right time because all the mountains are uh, showing up. Mm -hmm. October nice. is the October to October and November is the best time and then it gets winter and then back to April, May, June is really good time. Mm, okay, well, that's good to know. That's good to know for my yeah. future travel plannings. I might yes. visit you soon. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, thank you so much for taking the time out. I am super excited to interview you, not just you and your cookbook, but really dive deeper into your story, learn a little bit about your culture and why you decided to write this wonderful uh, cookbook, which I have, by the way. Oh. <laughs> Which I'm super, super, super stoked. It's a beautiful, thank beautiful, you. beautiful, um, you know, cookbook. So, you know, so thank you so much for sending this. And I was really ha happy to know that you photographed all the pictures. Is that right? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's awesome. So before we dive deep into the cookbook, sure. I want to learn more about you. Yeah. I like to know, you know, the origin story about my guests, how they got from point A to point B. 
So my first question to you is how did you, you know, the obvious question is how did you go into plant-based, you know, lifestyle or the vegan lifestyle? Please take a、uh, share with us. First of all, thank you for inviting me. I love your name, Chef Dog, because a <laughs> chef is also a dog.、Yes. Um, so <laughs> how I chose to go plant-based. Um, the ethnicity I am from Nepal.、Uh, we eat a lot of meat. So,、uh, well, when I was 15 years old, back in like 15 years ago, I started finding out that this is not the right way to go, and、uh, I would like to go vegetarian. At that time, we didn't know really veganism. Uh, and Nepal is really heavy in vegetarian diet, but it didn't happen. And then,、uh, because of my,、um, you know, situation, I had to go study in USA. And even there, I've been trying to go vegetarian for for very very long time, but it didn't happen. And now I was turning thirty, and I was thinking that I've been trying to go plant based for this long, and、uh, why I am not doing this. And especially when I found out、uh, how the animal farming is in you know bigger countries,、mm-hmm. and how all this milk and cheese are、uh, where like you know all the cows are full of hormones. So、uh, I started developing this like you know a sense that what's the point of eating this meat and this、uh, dairy that does not do any good to my body. So、uh, I decided in 2016 that. I would like to give it a try. It wasn't like you know I'm going like plan this fully plan this. I it was more like I need to give it a try, and if I like it, I would like to continue. And if I can't, like for example, people have different kind of body, and like you know you can't say that I want to go plan this, and then all of a sudden you can do it. So I decided、uh, I would like to try, and then I really liked it. To be honest, like you know. I feel like food is not only about eating to be healthy, but also making your soul happy. And my soul was more happy to add more plant-based in my、uh, lifestyle. And then、uh, I continue it. I was really happy. Finally,、uh, once I went plant-based, I saw different parts of life. Which I could not see before. Before I, you know, was eating meat and、uh, let's say seafood. And then、uh, when I when I started seeing、uh, different parts of the society, I realized that、uh, more and more people are not really eating plants. They are not adding plants in their diet, but they are adding like.、Uh, All this, like you know, fake meat, fake this, fake that. Like, what is this? Like, even within the plant-based lifestyle, they are not adding real plants. So it became more challenging for me because, <laughs> because, and I could not see that before. Like seriously, I could not because I wasn't living that life. Yeah. And once I started living that, it opened my eyes in a very different way. And since I come from a country where agriculture is a part of our culture, and we grow a lot of vegetable, like variety of vegetables, I was missing all these vegetables as well, which you cannot really find in you know U.S. in different parts of U.S. And then it became more challenging for me, and I started like、uh, getting more serious. Like I, before, I wanted to. Uh, become plant-based. Now I see this whole issue that nobody is adding more plants, and even my own, let's say, friends and sisters and、uh, my neighbors. So I started Vegan Nepal, you know, like a like my passion project.、Mm-hmm. Like、uh, I cook festivals every day, so why don't I just like you know start sharing that with.、Uh, My friends and family in the internet,、mm-hmm. and to be honest, I used to share my food videos for like a decade.、Mm-hmm. Like I like sharing food videos for some reason, always. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> It's fun, right? It's fun to,、yeah. to to be able to share food because sharing food、exactly. is the uni- is one of the universal languages, right? Exactly, exactly, and、uh, and then it started getting more and more serious. And then、uh, where I was living at the time in Lexington, Kentucky, I also started seeing that like you know there is no really good vegetarian place. Forget about vegan. But there is not even really a good vegetarian place, and there is like you know 
<laughs> so and then i uh, after um, over a year of uh, living this plan this lifestyle i thought that you know uh, i always wanted to be a chef but it didn't happen you know yeah. uh, for some reason i think i'm getting this another chance uh, at this age that i should do whatever i want to do because even though i went for graphic design i wasn't really happy and i didn't want it to go and work in a let's say an office Mm-hmm. So I thought uh, you know I'm going to go do a pop up and see how it's going to work out like it all happened with like I want to do this and I want to do that and then <laughs> that's how like one step went to another and yeah, another yeah. and then as soon as I went to do the pop up people loved it and which I knew like you know there must be people in the society that they are going to love vegetables like you know there are there is already a demand for it but there is no supply for it mm. because uh, there are not a lot of kids let's say or you know people who are cooking vegetables since they are young mm-hmm. that's one of the other problem i started seeing mm. and then uh, because you eat pizzas and burgers and you know just salads in your daily life and you are mostly also eating outside you're not really cooking every mm-hmm. day every day at home so there are so many other problems let's say mm-hmm. so as i went out people loved my food and then uh, it was only once a month so i was like i can do this once a month i mean you know and then it started another month and another month and i liked it and then i continued it and then the demand started uh, more and more then i cook for like you know uh, mayors and uh, judges of the city and i was quite surprised that uh, uh, they they loved <laughs> so this was in to- this was in kentucky this is in Kentucky. Yeah, Lexington, okay. Kentucky. Oh, okay. And then uh, even they were very surprised that how a vegan food can be this delicious and I had to uh, explain them that uh, vegan food is just eating plants to be honest and yeah. we humans are born to eat plants and we have been eating plants for like you know decades and decades i don't know how all of a sudden like uh, eating heavy meat and heavy dairy has become a part of our lifestyle mm-hmm. and uh, for some reason they were really happy and then uh, after doing 2 years of my uh, pop up i realized that uh, there is more in me and just like you know making dumpling and like fit vegetable fritters every month is wasn't really making me happy now mm. because the demand was growing and i cannot cook for everybody and just like it was uh giving me stress mm. so i thought that uh, i have been doing for uh, cooking for over 20 years now two decades and then uh i have been doing photography for over a decade went to college for graphic design which uh, i have to uh, i like design as well and photography as well so like uh, i didn't know i didn't know about cookbooks until let's say the age of 30 okay. that's, ama- that's amazing <laughs> that's amazing your story i read i read your story on uh, on your website on your blog yeah. and uh yeah. you know that i i can't imagine the moment like what that yeah. must have felt like when you entered oh. because you wrote you wrote that yeah. you went into a Barnes and Nobles and yes. then you were you were very surprised and shocked you know exactly and i wanted to share the story because i'm sure there are so many people like you know who has done so many things in their life but they are not completely happy you know they are looking for something that i wish there was uh, one thing that i can continue in my life and just be happy and content let's say content you know Mm-hmm. we call it like you know what is my purpose of life or what is my karma you know mm-hmm. there must be something like uh, something mm-hmm. so when i went there when when i saw like all these cookbooks from all over the world i not only saw cookbooks but i also saw a lot of things there because i was a photographer and a graphic designer you know uh, then i realized that oh my god like you know uh kids here they have been uh, looking cookbooks when they are 10 years old or 12 years old you know they come with their parents 
and I went to college for graphic design and I have still not really opened my this whole uh, dimension of like cookbooks like yeah. you know so at that time I was like this looks like my perfect match and this is what I was looking for oh my god yeah. but uh, <laughs> and then uh, and I also knew that like you know I come from a background where people don't really still like you know people don't really care about cookbooks let's say or like even they don't really buy books and read books you know most of them are um, they spend their time in kitchen uh, either cooking or let's say in the farm where they are growing so it's a different lifestyle let's say uh, so like for example if a kid in america they start learning cookbook at 12 i started cooking at 12 so it's there's a difference in that and then, uh, of course, like uh, all whatever I learned is an ancestral passing as well. So my experience of what I learned actually really helped me to figure out what kind of cookbook I should write. So it will mm-hmm. also help other generation. Mm-hmm. You know, it is not only just about a book of plants, but uh, I want like also kids to look at my book and be able to uh, cook. And mm-hmm. like, you know, if your parents are busy, so what? Like I started cooking yeah. at nine nine years old, you can do it too. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then uh, also like chefs who are really like, you know, uh, since they did not cook plants for, since they are young, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. Uh, I have been cooking since I was young. So here are the very basic recipes, which are really delicious, healthy, nutritious and then it doesn't take really long time to cook so like you know i don't want them to stress out like oh my god it takes like uh, three hours to cook Mm -hmm. i don't want them to get lazy and tired before they start cooking so uh, in a way i have uh, designed this book uh, where like a person can cook a simple meal and then they cook again and again. I want them to develop a habit at cooking at home, first thing, you know. Yeah. If you want to go out and eat, that's fine. You can go out and eat. But if you do not cook at home continuously, you cannot develop that habit. Mm-hmm. So you just can't. Like, you know, in the beginning, you have to. You have to push yourself. And then once you learn how to cook this basic food, like let's say basics, first you not need to learn your basics then you can imagine whatever you want to cook because now you already learn the simple techniques Mm -hmm. now like you know uh, if you want to go really crazy and spend four hours cooking a lot of dishes at one time go ahead you can do that as well Sorry, why? Uh, were you going to say something? No, 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 no. Oh, I'm, uh, okay. I, I, I love it because um, your book—it's it, not just a cookbook. You know, it would, mm-hmm. you know, when I was yeah. flipping through the pictures, it's almost like I was on a tour. You know, through <laughs> Nepal, yes. and yes. Uh, it's not. It, it, the pictures tell a beautiful story, right? You, you go a, a little bit into you know uh the culture aspects the family aspect you know why why you do agriculture why you cook why you farm you know just that's what i love about it it's not just a cookbook it's actually almost like a mini tour for those that have never um traveled to nepal um my sister has traveled and i would love to travel one day but it's almost like a little 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 tour you know through it absolutely it's 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 it's, it's, it's awesome so before we go deeper into the cookbook my next question for you is you know what are three things you want people to take away from the nepali you know culture right so if someone you know has a a interest or someone who has doesn't know anything about the culture of nepal you know what would you say would be uh, three um, top things you would want them to know first one is home cooking it is very important because uh, even until now there are a lot of people who don't really like to go out and eat a lot you know? and there are some people who never go out and eat a lot because they are very specific about uh, their ingredients mm-hmm. um, that's why uh, that's why like uh, I have 
added the whole section in my book about home cooking and why it is so important to live a healthy lifestyle. Home cooking is very, very, very important. And it is not only about your lifestyle, but you are also passing that uh, to the next generation. So another thing, uh, if you don't cook at home, how are you going to have that relationship with your, let's say, partner or your mm. child or like, you know, there is this, so uh, th- we have a home cooking community. You don't only cook at home, but you also invite your cousins or, you know, your relatives and eat together. Eating is really, really a uh, important part of our culture mm. and then second thing uh, let's say growing even though we go out and then buy vegetables uh, we still um, believe in organic uh, growing because like you know, in the cities uh, they have already started putting pesticides and like I said people are very conscious about like what they eat here like very conscious after I came back from uh, US I realized that even though they go out they always complain about like you know uh, how they don't really care about growing these days and like they put all these pesticides and then you know uh, that does not have any nutrient values things even though they are they haven't even gone to school or college they know that already mm. <laughs> yeah. so um uh, uh, no matter what, a lot of people who has land, a little bit of land, they mm-hmm. grow their greens. Greens mm-hmm. is very important. Uh, let's say dal and like rice is not uh, is possible by everybody because it needs bigger, a little bit bigger space and bigger farm. But people who have bigger farms, uh, we still grow rice here. And then uh, besides sag, which is very seasonal, you can see the green section in my cookbook. Mm-hmm. Beside that, uh, seasonal vegetable is also very important for people. And um, like I said, like if you don't have a lot of space, people uh, do rooftop gardening. So mm-hmm. they grow whatever they they can. Let's say they can within their space and what they want to eat uh, very often. So mm-hmm. like the tomato, cilantro, and uh, some seasonal vegetable like okra, and then uh, let's say uh, bitter gourd. They don't really need a lot of space. They can just mm-hmm. like you know hang around. So those vegetables are um, they like to grow by themselves. Mm-hmm. And then third, let's say uh, spirituality. Spirituality is very important in our. Uh, lifestyle, Nepali lifestyle, because be- beside cooking at home and trying to be healthy and growing, uh, which is a part of their like exercise, because they don't all do yoga yeah, and workouts, yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> there's no beside, gyms, there, no, <laughs> there's no big I mean, gyms. I mean, there are gyms, but uh, let's say there are different group of people, like people yeah. like me or older than me, they didn't really went to gym. You know, they don't, so they don't have this habit of going to gym and for them uh, working in the garden is their gym or yes. working in the kitchen is their gym like you know basic workout and beside that they also want to connect with the higher you know being and uh, just like uh, to live a healthy lifestyle you also have to uh, focus in spirituality and now like I'm sure there are people who did not grow up with that, but we grew up in Hinduism and Buddhism, like the mixture of that. So uh, it's really hard to say that, you know, I'm not a spiritual person. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like in our now DNA. And then uh, um, for me, that is like a meditation. You know what I mean? Uh, you don't have to like sit and meditate you it's like a sadhana you go and then worship and then uh, connect to your you know, spiritual god wherever you like because we have a lot and uh, that also that also in some way makes you happy and uh, makes your uh, makes your brain clear like you know for example let's say uh, these days people wake up and then instead of going to 
or worshiping or like you know going to temples they start scrolling mm. you know <laughs> they start like scrolling and once you start scrolling obviously you will scroll for half an hour or let's say 15 30 an hour if you are in too many uh, apps Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. you know so uh, for me i feel like i would rather just like you know uh, if i can i will go to a temple but a lot of nepali house already has a tiny temple in their house because they are like so spiritual so i will just go there and like you know meditate a little bit uh, and and then go back to my lifestyle if i have to cook breakfast or you know lunch whatever or go for shopping so this thing three this three things are very important <laughs> but vita you just described you just described the lifestyle that is completely opposite of americans <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what 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 i got okay so i grew up so mm-hmm. i'm a child of immigrant parents um mm-hmm. my father my father my mother they came from southern china uh mm-hmm. hong kong so not too far away right and uh they came in the early 80s and me and my sister were born you know in the united states so we grew up as american but we also have a very close ties with our chinese heritage right yes. so we're mm-hmm. able to understand both worlds okay that's great and uh yeah and um you know what you just described is something that is very you know it for me it sounds very peaceful um yeah. you know the lifestyle is more gravitating towards you know contentment happiness balance harmony right yes, which yes. in the chinese culture you know we do have a lot of but it's over the very years yeah. yeah but over the years you know we've uh, been influenced by western civilization corporations so that's kind of changed a little bit um yeah. but you know i love it because everything is connected you know you said growing your food cooking your food the spirituality they're all connected you know absolutely and, uh, it's very opposite <laughs> yeah, of american then, society and then what you said we need a balanced lifestyle to be content and happy you can just work and then go out and eat and then expect that your life is going to be healthy yeah. or like balanced so you're going to be yeah. happy inside yeah. that's not going to work out you need to find a way what makes you happy you know and then you need to figure it out and then apply that in your lifestyle mm-hmm. you but western lifestyle is you work 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 all this like work work where you don't even get off it's like uh <laughs> no that is not what we were born for you know that was not what we were born for we need a relaxed lifestyle yeah. and then we need a very like uh I like Nepali lifestyle because it it is like for other people it might be slow. Mm-hmm. But uh, we are doing everything what we're supposed to do, you know, as a human being, as a human civilization, you know, where we are going through the western civilization. That's what I actually started thinking um uh, when I was also writing this book, you know, cuz uh After living 10 years in US, I you do change, you know, like you you all of a sudden go in a different lifestyle and yeah. then you start thinking like, you know, where am I going with yeah, this yeah, lifestyle yeah. like I'm I'm, I'm, so, I'm so gl- I'm so glad because um before COVID, you know, I'm a big traveler. Yeah. I've traveled. Mm-hmm. I'm very humbled and grateful to to travel the world and it's very fascinating to me when you meet people from different countries, they just have different eyes and you know, when I yes. hear you, you know, talk about it, I could see how much of a difference, you know, it's been for you and Absolutely. how it's so how shocking it is and you could you could hear it and see it in your body language. and you know but for others it's just normal it's normal to exactly. work all the time yeah. it's normal exactly. to work all the time it's normal to exactly. not have a break it's normal yeah. to eat the way we eat and yeah. unfortunately it kills us you know it literally kills our health it destroys exactly. our self relationship and i'm very yeah. i'm just glad that you know your eyes can see that 
and then uh, my husband is american so like you know even though he's a spiritual person and such a like a humble person he was in this trend of working so much you know and i was trying to explain him that you know i understand where you are going with this but this is not the right way because you are going to crash in your 40s or like you know very soon and uh, you are my husband and i cannot let that happen you know because <laughs> i can I already see that future. Yeah, so that yeah. is another reason why it was very important like you know I am myself crashing to be honest because I'm like so confused and just imagine like you grew up in this culture so yeah. like you know you cannot see but I can see it. So yeah. let's go to Nepal, you know. Let's go it's fine. To Nepal. <laughs> let's go halfway around the world. Come with yeah. me. You'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Nepal because uh, he has to also explore more Asian culture, you know, or different culture. Let's say just to understand himself, not to like you know, not to like um, find out something new or any like you know why like people travel for two weeks and one month and they think that they have discovered like you know this and that. But I feel like what can you discover in two weeks? Like you know you are a tourist in two weeks, and that's why I told my husband that uh, no, I mean, and we already knew that COVID was coming. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, because we plan to come to Nepal in 2019, and then mm-hmm. uh, and uh, I, I told him 2020 we are going to Nepal. It doesn't matter what happens. Then all of a sudden this COVID news started, and we were like, you know, now we are going to Nepal for as much as we want to live because I don't know what is going to happen. Because you know, all, everybody was so. Oh, afraid and stressed out that everybody's dying, or I don't know, like you know, take this and that. And uh, even though we knew uh, we eat really good and we have a healthy lifestyle, who knows what can happen? Like sure, seriously, sure, you know, who, sure. who knows? So what we thought that uh, we're gonna go to Nepal and we're gonna live there uh, as long as we want. And I need to finish my book, so I'm gonna. Finish my book in Nepal. I don't know anything, you know, because uh, even though I had com- almost completed my book, I still I felt like this is not like uh, complete. Let's say, you know, there is a lot of thing missing in my book, and I cannot really tell right now because I'm in a lot of stress right now. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know. And then uh, I thought that you know I don't want to have stress and finish my first book because this is like the first uh, also vegetarian and vegan cookbook. Once it is out, it's gonna be out. So I'm yeah. gonna go to Nepal and I'm gonna relax a little bit and then I'll focus in my book. And then you need to also focus in whatever you want to do. Like you know, so I also made him quit everything, his work. <laughs> you you <laughs> must like, have been you must have been a very good convincer. <laughs> <laughs> you must have been a very good convincer. <laughs> well, I feel like you know he's been working for thirty-five some years of his life, like continuously. Because American yeah. lifestyle is you can't quit; you yeah. have to work. So I thought, like you know, that's fine if you quit for one year. Come on, like think it as your vacation. Yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> and, exactly. And in some ways, Corona really helped because then I can convince him more that, like you know, so you want to work and like you know, if something happens to you, uh, like you know, what am I gonna do? Like you know, I need to leave my lifestyle now. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh. Let me uh, let me let me let me shift gears a little bit. So I love the fact that you took the time to develop and you know to really not rush the process. I think that's an amazing thing. I didn't. Uh, I haven't come out with a cookbook yet, but I wrote my first like half memoir, half self help book. You know,、um, documenting a lot of personal and professional stories. That took me a year and a half. I've never、yeah. written a book before. I didn't know what I was doing, and so I I can I can relate to you. I can understand、yep. how sometimes you're not in the moment to write something, and sometimes you are, and you can't. Writing is very different. You know, you have to, you know, not rush it. Trust the process, and you know, just trust that. You know, when it's time to write, then you write. When it's not time to write, then you don't write. You know.、So. Yeah, exactly. And and plus, sometimes you need to start to figure out, like you know, where you want to go. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. And I'm glad I started in 2019. So I had this vision, but I just need to like you know uh, figure out where this vision is going in yeah. the book. Yeah, yeah. So coming yeah. coming to Nepal was definitely the best decision I took mm-hmm. in my life. One of the best decision, and uh, and also for my husband to be honest, which mm-hmm. is why like you know I. Added this story because like now we have this Nepali side, and then now I also have this American side of mm-hmm. like my story where like, uh, like you said, people might not understand it, but I want people to understand this that you know living a healthy lifestyle is also not only eating about plants. There is a yeah. lot of factors a lot that more. goes yes. in. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's definitely. Um, so I have one more question before we go to the food demo. Is um, traditionally how is cooking set up? Is it mostly cooked by men? Is it mostly cooked by women? You know, does the family get together to cook? What is cooking culture like in a Nepali household, for example? So uh, most women, let's say until my mother time, uh, they were housewives, and mm. then they do all the cooking. And then uh, most men they go to uh, the f- uh, farms and then they they do their uh, farming. So we had uh, this really nice balanced lifestyle, but uh, that has been changed now because we are, you know, going more to the Western lifestyle. But still, uh, since our mother used to cook a lot, and there. Are Uh, other women's like for example my aunt and my aunt from mother side and from you know father side and my sisters and my cousins so uh, every time like we have a lot of festivals every time we have festivals we have gatherings and then we cook like cooking is just like a uh, part of our uh, lifestyle festivals and in general like uh, we don't really spend money let's say like you know cuz cooking is like you know uh something that we like to spend all our time and all our money mm. yeah and uh, that is why i really like nepali lifestyle and i seriously think that uh, uh every let's say not only women but also men has to learn cooking because if you if there is only one generation who does not who does not cook then uh, you kind of miss out on like you know other generation because they yeah. now they will start only eating outside mm-hmm. so when we are child uh like for example me me my brother and my sister we all used to be around the kitchen mm-hmm. that was like very very common before the cell phone came I grew mm-hmm. up without cell phone let's say uh, I didn't really had cell phone until I went to US because mm-hmm. at that time seriously I used to think so what are we going to do with cell phone like I don't know who to call because uh, <laughs> 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 because we had a lifestyle uh, where like you have a landline and if you have yes. important talk you just call in landline and it's cheaper and if you have cell phone like now everybody in the family has cell phone so like you know uh, it's expensive mm-hmm. you know if and then i feel like exactly like what am i going to talk in the cell or phone like i don't even know <laughs> because <laughs> because like when we have gatherings we talk with a lot of people and a lot of things so like there's you know, real conversations when you're real, in person in person so like uh, we didn't even have that habit so when the cell phone first started you know when i was 18 i thought like oh cell phone is a great idea but uh, <laughs> it might be only for ministers because they get call from so many people what am i going to do with the cell phone i don't even know <laughs> so <laughs> So I, that was a good thing. I really like how I grew up because now I don't have cell phone or I don't have. Uh, we had TV, but uh, there was only one or two channels at a certain time. So like you know, you watch a cartoon or like a series, and then back to kitchen. Like we're mm-hmm. always in the kitchen because uh, 
like you said for uh, even our breakfast is uh, cooked breakfast it's not cereal or like packaged food and then your lunch is again cooked lunch and then your snacks is again cooked <laughs> uh, snacks <laughs> and dinner is cooked to us uh, uh, dinner so like uh, most of the time you cook and then you clean and you take rest or do whatever you want or if you are young kid you go to school and then you come back and then back to the kitchen mm. so in that way i think it was really good uh, then i had this practice of being in the kitchen every day versus like uh, these days kids are not in the kitchen they're always yeah. in the cell phone so in some way it's not even their fault it's just like the lifestyle is not it's really good for opposite. them yeah. opposite and especially when you are child that is the time you need to put your child to the kitchen so they will have a habit to be in the kitchen because like you know if you are not if you don't have this habit until you are let's say 15 or like 16 then you cannot develop that habit all of a sudden when you are a teenager and then uh, there might be some kids who really want to be in the kitchen they have to work really hard mm-hmm. you know because yeah. like you know some might think that oh this uh, lifestyle i was eating or whatever i'm eating is not good for my health i need to uh, try to cook for myself and it is really hard for them because it is like you know they are trying to do self help so the best thing if a, whatever a parent can do is even though they don't like cooking here is my book <laughs> 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 here is my book uh, that is why i have very simple recipes to start with uh, try like you know try with your children when they are 8 year old or like whenever you cook you need to put your children around you so they can see and when they see they finally uh, the what do you call they start they start or they have this they develop the skills yeah skills and enthusiasm that oh my mother is cooking and i want to cook as well so like mm-hmm. it takes some time but if i would not have been in kitchen since i was very very young then i don't think i would have started cooking at a very early age you know mm-hmm. um, yeah. so so like you know i that's why this book was very important to me because now i have lived that a very different ancient lifestyle and then now i am in a very different modern lifestyle so mm-hmm. i understand the children of modern lifestyle because even nepali kids are becoming very modern they don't mm-hmm. really cook they don't really like you know help their parents in the kitchen they just like going out and eat which they might think it's fun when they are young but then it will catch up with a yeah. lot of uh, you know health problems by yeah. the time they are 20 years old so uh, oh yeah we're 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 seeing the we're seeing the the negative health trends we are seeing the poor health um a lot of yeah. um you know poor health is becoming more and more real and more apparent earlier and earlier so i would love to you know with you uh let's try to get people more inspiration so what are we cooking today today i'm going to cook okra curry Hey guys, if you are interested in having a consultation with me and actually see me one on one, um the Chef Doc Lifestyle Medicine uh practice has partnered with Plant Based Telehealth and uh, we offer uh lifestyle medicine consultations. So you'll be able to see me one on one and um uh, I can go over your health history and see what we can do to fill in the gaps. Uh we can talk about your physical health anything from food to lifestyle to diet to setting up your kitchen to cooking preparation to grocery shopping to your mental health um i think it's important that we build our emotional resilience to talking about your sleep and how to stay hydrated and what are the best uh medicines if necessary what are the best supplementations if necessary and we do all this in a very concise manner and it's a conversation i take the time out to listen i take the time out to really understand you from the ground up and to look at all aspects 
um, of your physical, emotional, and mental health. And um, please, you know, uh, drop me a line, schedule an appointment if you want to see me one-on-one. And um, I am very, very looking forward to learning more about you. And again, thank you so much for visiting uh, here uh, at The Chef Doc. Okra curry is one of my favorite. Uh, you can find okra all year round, to be honest. Um, and then okra is also something that is very popular in US. That's what I have seen. And you can also find throughout the US, which is the other reason I thought okra curry must go in my cookbook. So once the pan is hot, you add your oil. Here I'm adding mustard oil. But uh, uh, if you can't find mustard oil, you can use whatever oil you want or whatever is available. You said mustard oil? Yes, mustard oil. Oh, okay. Mustard oil is a local, it's very local in Nepal. You can find throughout Nepal. So like a lot of people uh, use mustard oil for their day-to-day -day life. Mm. And then you add some cumin seed. I have added mustard seed in my book, but now since I'm using mustard oil, I already have a flavor of mustard. So I'm not going to add mustard oil. And then after that, add your onion. Uh, no, I, I love curry. I'm a, I'm a big fan of, you know, Indian food. I've had Indian curry before, Thai curry before. Um, I've had Japanese curry before. Um, they're all very, very different. So it's very, uh, you know, it's very fascinating. So I'm... So it's, I'm... Ex so it's exciting that you haven't had Nepali curry before. <laughs> so Nepali curry at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to come in and try yours. <laughs> yeah, because like I think every uh, like you said, uh, Indian curry and Thai curry, uh, they use spices in a different way. I mean, they use very similar spices, but I think the flavor is uh, there is a difference in the flavor. I know that uh, your your mother. Um, you know, guided you to cook when you were a very, very young age. What is her reaction, um, you know, from you taking your life to now becoming, you know, a cookbook author? Um, is she happy about that or what is her reaction? Um, that's, that's a great question. So like I said, uh, since we do not come from a background where people like, you know, buy books or, or like, like she does, she didn't even really go to school. So for her, like she's happy, but then she still doesn't understand what it's like to write a cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Are you the first one in your family to graduate from college? Yes, for with bachelors, let's say. And my sister is graduating soon as well. But then uh, I also chose a lifestyle where um, I wanted to be an artist, you know, because yeah. it is something that came from inside. 
and then like i said the ethnicity i come from i'm nepal yeah. and nepal are the great artisan of nepal and i think that is why for some reason like i it came from inside let's say like uh, uh like i am already an artist by nature and why i'm trying to do this and that i need to focus in this so writing my first book was really challenging because nobody yeah. has done that before and for me it was just like you know i didn't even had a uh, reference let's say you know i could not even look at different nepali books and but something told me that uh, i i am really good at photography and already photo editing and uh, cooking and you know design landscape photography and i have so much interest in my culture and i really want to uh, document my nepali culture but also like women lifestyle yeah you know I mean? because i think women are not very appreciated in my culture because they only know how to cook and clean but i think that is the most important part of becoming a human or like yeah. a good human being and you know things like that like i just i don't know the way i grew up and the way i see the society and how the society see me i yeah. think that that has made me who i am right now and then uh, starting a book was difficult but once now a book came out and now i have international friends who actually understands my work you know yeah. still people in nepal they have not understand my work here because for <laughs> them it's just like a, it's like a, oh, it's just a book like cookbook like you know i don't know <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? Like that you're you're a pioneer in so many different ways, you know, and uh, you know, maybe people from your family and friends may not understand it, but over here and other places outside of Nepal, it's very very appreciative because it allows us to learn more about your culture um and it gets us uh, another approach another lens another perspective into plant-based cooking because you know there's so many different ways you know it's you know for us americans you know for those that don't eat plant-based or vegan they uh-huh. they just think of a salad right yeah. but you and i both know that it's way more than just a salad it's so much it's so much so you are a, a an incredible voice to be able to bring that forward you know so so i deeply appreciate your work thank you so much i hope like uh, another another reason to write this book was um i want more like women of nepal to be happy and do what they want to do you know and not like what i'm seeing the trend is we're all going out and somewhere we're all becoming a slave you mm. know in some ways and that also really bugged me from inside that you know mm. i have so much talent in me myself and like uh, why am i trying to do work for other people that i don't even i'm not even interested like yeah. why should i live a life that you know uh, that i'm not doing what i really want to do you know mm. especially when i'm young because uh, when you are young you need to explore yourself and then do things that you want to do and if it doesn't work out i i'll switch it to something else mhm mm-hmm. what i mean yes so, i do i do i i hope like in maybe 5 to 10 years um, more nepali women will open their eyes and then not just nepali women in general like women let's say because yeah uh, there is a big another issue going on in the world where women are not pursuing what they really should but they are going in a trend of just making money and yeah. living a corporate life and that will not make them happy in the long run mm-hmm. and i hope they will realize that understand that so like you know they can have a happy uh, life later on yeah 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 exactly the 60s you know so So I did uh, the 
potato cook a little bit first and then I add uh, okra. Now, is it any special kind of okra or any okra would do? You can use any okra. I know that there are some like uh, different kind of okra you can find in the US. But in Nepal, I haven't really seen different kind of okras. They, they are all green okras and yes. just the one that is long and tall and slender ones. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you can also cut okra in different ways. So you can, but I like this size. Mm -hmm. so, okay. So basically when you cook them, they cook really nicely and then uh, all the spices also will blend in all sides versus if you cook uh, if you cut it really like you know in a big chunk the spices don't uh, blend properly in the all sides mm. mm -hmm. And very important tip, make sure you cook your uh, curry in medium heat, otherwise your onion can burn really quickly. Mm -hmm. You can see a few of my onions are already burned because I was uh, busy talking and not focusing. <laughs> <laughs> What did what did you uh, put before the okra? Uh, I put some salt. So uh, usually when uh, when you put salt in once the uh, once you fry the potatoes, it will help the potatoes cook a bit faster. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so another tip. So there are some potatoes I have noticed that uh, cooks really fast. And in Nepal, we have different kind of potatoes, which also takes a little bit longer time. So okay. for those potatoes that takes longer time, you can add a little bit of salt uh, while you are cooking on the potatoes. But if it is like, you know, the, the kind of potatoes that cooks really quickly, then you mm -hmm. don't have to add it uh, while you are uh, frying them. Mm -hmm. Now for those that don't uh, cook with okra, um, it can be, uh, when you're preparing it, it could be very uh, slimy. <laughs> And people oh, yes. and and people and people get turned off by the sliminess, but that goes away. <laughs> so if you don't want okra to be slimy, what you gotta do is, if you know uh, you're cooking okra tomorrow, so you can wash it and let it dry overnight. But uh, for example, you were shopping and now you want to wash the okra and cook right away. In that situation, you wash them and then you tap it with a cloth. A cotton mm -hmm. cloth and make it dry and then uh, it will not be slimy. Most people just wash them and then chop them and then cook them right away. That is what is causing it to be slimy. Mm. I think I have left a tip in the book for the slimy. You did, food. you did, you did. Let me find my ginger here. So for this recipe, um, I am using only ginger today because I am avoiding um, garlic for a few months. I am in a garlic cycle, it's a fasting. But, okay. uh, but uh, uh, in, in my cookbook, I have added ginger and garlic book. Yeah, I, I love that combination. It's a very common common combination in, uh, in in Chinese cooking. So yeah, absolutely. Asian cooking, let's say. Yeah, in general. Yeah, Asian cooking in general. <laughs> Are you using a mortar and pestle? Yes. Yeah, I didn't want to do it on the table because it is going to shake. But here, my ginger is ready. I usually use more and pesto for all my spices because I really like that flavor, raw flavor. Mm. You can see my potatoes are cooking now and also my okra. Most um, curry, you have to keep 
uh, stirring it every minute or two minutes to make sure that like, you know it is not sticking on the bottom of the pan. Mm -hmm. And I also like to uh, tell you that uh, I do, even though I eat all the vegetables, I go on a cycle where I'm sometimes uh, fasting ginger, uh, sorry, not ginger, but garlic, sometimes onions, sometimes potatoes, because now my ancestor used to eat very seasonal food, mm. right? Like even it is in China or like in Asia. Back in the days, we used to eat seasonal food, but now everything is available all the time. Mm. And uh, to eat all this food according to your body, some people uh, uh, cannot really like, you know, they don't really feel good to eat onion and garlic all the time or even like the potato. For example, if I eat uh, garlic all the time, like I feel like uh, my inflammation kicks in. And mm -hmm. which is why I feel like uh, that's fine for me to go on a cycle. So sometimes I don't really uh, add a lot of oil or sometimes I like to eat also oil free. So like, like, like I said that uh, eating healthy is not only about eating plants as well. You need to first know your body type. It's very important. And then work, work on it. Mm -hmm. My okra is uh, really cooked now. I'm going to add uh, ginger. You can add ginger and garlic. And then I'm also going to add my cumin powder. Uh, ginger, cumin seed, cumin powder, and turmeric is my very go to spices. So that's cumin, cumin powder? This is cumin powder and I also grind, grind my own cumin powder at home. Okay. It really has a good flavor versus like store bought. Mm. Uh, to do that, it is very simple. You buy cumin seed and then roast it just a little bit like so say five minutes in low heat and then ground it and then put it in a bottle. Mm. Your cumin powder is ready. Mm. Now, Babita, what is the difference between cooking the spices and the garlic and ginger before the dish or and after the dish? Because I've noticed that you are cooking, you're adding the garlic and ginger and spices afterwards. Like, what's the difference? So, I like to first cook my vegetable and then add the uh, spices. So, like, the vegetable are also cooked right and the spices still have that raw and beautiful flavor mm. versus like if you cook your spices before and, and then you cook your uh, vegetable the best uh, spices are really overly cooked over the mm. time because now you're cooking it for 30 to 45 minutes mm. so once my once your uh let's say potatoes are cooked and you can see your uh, okras are almost cooked, not fully cooked. Then you add your spices. I also added turmeric, by the way. Then once it is nicely mixed, and soak it for a while. My cooking is definitely in cycles, so like, you know, you cook your onion a little bit and then potato and then uh, you whatever vegetable, right now I'm using okra, but like if you are putting cauliflower, cook your cauliflower, then add your spices, mix it well, and then uh, if you want to add tomatoes for the gravy, you add your tomatoes and then top it with your cilantro and ready. Mm. So while you are doing this, uh, you can chop your tomatoes if you have not chopped beforehand. Most of my cooking is like that, like you know, uh, I do my uh, tomatoes, I chop my tomatoes and my, uh, let's say, 
grind my ground my uh, spices while I'm uh, cooking the dishes. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I'm also cooking both sides. So I will tell you a very good tip in a second. Yeah. So here you go, here is my tomato and cilantro ready. So now the spices are mixed. As you can see, and you can also tell by the flavor. Mm. Smell it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my tomatoes and chilies. If you want more spicy, you can add two or three chilies. I'm just gonna add one chili. And for okra, I'm only adding two tablespoons of oil. But uh, if you want to add three tablespoons or four tablespoons, you can go ahead and do that as well. Because okra is one of the vegetables that requires extra oil. Now once this is mixed, What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover the lid and cook it for two minutes so the tomatoes are nicely cooked. So when you are making a Nepali dalva set, what I do is I cook in uh, two stoves. Mm -hmm. uh, I cook my curry in one side and then I cook my dal in uh, other side. I already cooked my dal today and then obviously there is a rice cooker where you cook your rice bread. Once mm -hmm. your dal is done, which only takes 10 minutes to be honest, you take your dal aside and then if you want to make greens or like, you know, uh, if you want to make greens or bulbara uh, gohatsa, which is tomato, tomato sauce, and you can start with that on uh, on your uh, another stove. And then you can still cook your curry at the same time. But uh, it might it will take some experience, like for example, if this is the first time, uh, you might not be able to do that, but if you are cooking uh, curry for let's say three or four times, you can just very easily, you know, bounce around, okay, you cook this, you close it, now it's uh, my sap turn or my mm -hmm. uh, dal turn or my, you know, uh, tomato sauce turn. So even though it looks like four dishes, you can cook everything within like 45 minutes. Mm. You need to have like a rhythm. One, two, one, two. <laughs> <five. laughs> you can see the tomatoes are cooking now. Looking really good. show you how. Let me see if I can do this. So I have washed some greens. Let me chop it real quick. Yeah. So I want to show like you know how you can still cook your curry and then work on your stuff. Yeah. So <laughs> these are mustard greens, which is also like really popular greens in Nepal. These are rich in iron and the oxygen, really good for your digestive system. People, if you have constipation, like a regular constipation issues. Please add sag in your daily life and you will see the change very quickly. One thing I have really noticed in uh, Western lifestyle that they don't really add greens in their life which is really important in Asian cooking, either it is Nepali, Indian, 
the Chinese or Thai. Mm -hmm. They love having sag as a side dish. Mm -hmm. Ready. I'm going to make a very simple sag recipe. Just a little bit of oil in the And for those that um uh, who are not familiar with sag, can you explain a little bit what sag is? Sag is just like green vegetables. You know, different kind of green vegetables. Uh, these are mustard. I have four different kinds. I think mustard, uh, fenugreek, spinach, and then um, one more. Uh, what was it? I don't remember, but I think I have four different kinds in my book. But to be honest, uh, in Asia, uh, there are a lot of different kinds of sag and greens you can find. Oh, I remember. Pumpkin leaves, which is yes, also my favorite. Leaves, yeah, yeah. Yes, favorite. So, um, like I said, uh, first thing you can find a lot of different kinds of greens in the uh, US unless you go to an Asian store or Indian store. Uh, so, like, uh, it's very difficult, but why I chose to have. Uh, why I chose four different recipes in my cookbook it's because of, it's very simple to grow so if you can find you can just use a bucket and then try to grow mustard green or like you know just throw some mustard seeds and you can uh, grow mustard green just throw some fenugreek seeds and you can grow uh, fenugreek greens and then just throw one pumpkin seed in like you know a pot or like in your uh, front yard, backyard. You can grow a huge uh, pumpkin uh, tree or uh, sorry, uh, pumpkin leaves and uh, and then another one is spinach which is also very easy. Mm -hmm. uh, you just need a pot and throw some uh, spinach seed and you can grow your own spinach, you know, sal, which yeah. is again very, very important, like you already said. It is very important part of our Nepali, uh, Nepali set. And then it is also very important to live a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, you're absolutely but, right. We don't have enough greens in our diet. No, not at all. Like that is why I was also very... And th these are only the four ones that I chose because it it is easily available or at least like if you really try you mm. can find it in west coast or east coast or like you know even in Kentucky and it is really really easy to grow so mm. like if you don't find it uh, just try growing one uh, greens and then start adding uh, to your uh, diet and if you don't want to saute them on the side you can also add it in your curry or your fried rice or like you know pasta like whatever you want to uh, add in yes so this is heating up <coughs> usually uh, i also add garlic saute garlic a little bit and then just throw my greens in it but today i'm just adding a little bit of cumin seed because this is very simple and flavorful and adds a lot of flavor in your nepali or like you know in your dish then fry that a little bit or fry the cumin just yes. for a few seconds and then add salt And then just add a little bit of salt. 
make sure you don't add a lot of salt in your greens because uh, uh, once you cook the greens, it can, uh, what do you call? Contracts. So, yeah, contracts. So when you first put the salt, it might be one whole um, pan, but then once you put salt and cook it, it really contracts down to just like one whole. And that's it. Uh, I will cover it for a minute or two so that the skins are cooked. Most people, to be honest, also like it uh, raw. Then, uh, the other way to cook uh, greens is saute some garlic. I really like uh, um, when I saute some garlic, but if you want to spice it up, you can saute some garlic, onion, and chilies. I have also shared four different kinds of ways to make greens in my cookbook so please mm -hmm. take a look at it so like you know you don't necessarily have to cook to a certain greens in a certain style and besides that i also share a lot of my um, uh, everyday cooking which is like you know i had a lot of greens in my daily life in my uh, social media mm -hmm. So the curry is ready, you can see that. I'm gonna add cilantro. Oh, that's beautiful. A lot of people like to add uh, cilantro seed, but then uh, I can easily get the cilantro so instead of seeds, um, cilantro powder. I like to use fresh cilantro in that, again for like a nice aroma. Flavor plus aroma. There you go, the curry is ready. Nice. So, now you just need gas. <laughs> yeah. So this is ready and then sag will be ready in a minute. Um, I have also, I have also cooked the dal already for you. Oh wow. <laughs> Again, this is a very simple dal. I just boiled red lentils and then added um, turmeric and salt. Nothing very uh, fancy, but again, if you want to uh, spice it up, I have a recipe in the book where you can fry some onion garlic and then add it on top. And then I also cook some rice. I had some brown rice, so I cooked some brown rice. Yeah, here. beautiful, here. beautiful. <laughs> so, like I said, uh, it, do it doesn't take a long time to cook this whole meal. You just need to learn how. You just need to learn the technique, how to cook them in a rhythm so you are cooking your rice dal and your curry outside and then you start in a jar on the other side. I yeah, didn't make yeah. a little sauce today because uh, I was running out of time here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this is good enough. You already have four different varieties and here you go. Sag is ready. Oh, beautiful. And then sometimes when it is only for one or two person, you can see that you know it leaves water here and it's yeah. yeah yeah so yeah yeah in that case sometimes i also don't put any dal and just like you know, make sure that i uh, use the water of the sag and rice and curry and mix it together and make yeah. it nice for some meat so awesome. here should i make should i make a plate for you here what yeah you yeah need? sure let's do it let's do it Want to see the see the complete beautiful picture? Yeah. Let's do this. Let me put this here. I like how the top of it is green. Oh, thanks. I'm gonna do this. So put my rice here. Put my rice here. 
Awesome. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> she recreated, recreated the cover. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm just, I'm just fascinated because remember how you said, uh, you know, before you're like, what do you do with a cell phone? And now, you know, so many years later, we're able to podcast with someone <laughs> across, you know, across half a world away, yeah. cook, demonstrate and tell your story. And yeah. yeah, so I mean, there are advantages of it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You need to utilize this tool properly. Yeah, exactly. So thank you so, so much for, you know, giving us, um, you know, just a snippet of your story, your culture. Um, I've learned a lot. And, um, you know, what I got from it is, you know, very harmonious, very balanced, very, uh, you know, simple. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of it is uh, not that complicated. You know, when we think of plant-based, when we think of veganism, when we think of whole food plant-based, when we think of vegetarianism, we think of it as very comp complicated and very complex. And I'm very happy to, you know, uh, spend this time with you to, you know, to showcase that it's not that. And another important thing uh, I have also noticed going playing this that a lot of people think that you need to be rich to be uh, yes. living a plant-based lifestyle which i think is opposite <laughs> because uh, you can grow plants you know but yeah. you cannot like have a, a animal and then you know cut the animal that's like yeah. too much but if, if you really want to live a plant-based lifestyle it's very simple easy and then you can grow your own food and you can, to be honest, learn more about plants, which is you will not understand until you really have more plants in yeah. your life. Yeah, exactly, exactly. For those that want to get your book, find out more about you, where can they go? Oh, uh, you can go to veganepal.net. You can find all the links of my uh, different website where you can find my cookbook, Plan Basic Lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> and if you buy my book, please uh, share your recipes or, you know, on stories and tag me at Vegan Nepal. I would like to see more people cooking from different parts of the world. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. It's been such a great pleasure, you know, to have you on the show. And, you know, you never know, I might, you know, one day come over and knock on your door <laughs> and try and try your try your recipes, you know, in person. So thank you so, so much for being, you know, taking the time out, you know, for it to thank be here with so us. Thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, I had a wonderful time. <laughs> thank you so much. Guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you feel like this was a benefit for someone else, please let them know. Until then, please say goodbye to Chef Farida. <laughs> hey guys, thank you so much for watching that episode. We hope that you enjoyed it. If you like this, please like, follow, and subscribe. And please follow us for the latest updates for this season, season five. And if you feel that this was a benefit for someone else, please let them know. And please follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, and YouTube. And thank you so much again. And we will see you on the next one.